From Amateur Radio Newsline Report, number 2425, this is Ham Nation Headlines for Wednesday, April 24th, 2024. We begin this week with the story of a disaster preparation drill in one part of Oregon, where living on a floodplain means always being vigilant. The disaster scenario was a simulated emergency test, or SET, in Crook County, Oregon. But the response was very real on Saturday, April 13th, as radio amateurs and others responded from Crook County Emergency Management, the Sheriff's Search and Rescue Team, and the County's Auxiliary Communication Team. The amateur radio station at the area hospital was activated, and communications went out over the Grizzly Mountain repeater and on two-meter simplex. In this simulated scene across the region's floodplain, the reservoirs had reached capacity after abundant winter snowfall. A nearby river below a major dam threatened to rise and cause flooding. Residential areas faced further dangers as a major creek began to swell. The drill's organizer, Jim Burge, KB7SHT, told Newsline that 26 hams were mobilized and four others checked in from their home QTH. The drill also became a training exercise for newcomers who were paired with more experienced hams and took an active part in learning how to call the net. Jim told Newsline that hams were involved in all 38 missions conducted last year using both simplex frequencies and area repeaters. No, these instances were not simulated. Jim said, quote, Four of those missions were truly life-saving missions and ham radio was our only means of communication. End quote. This is Ralph Squillacci, KK6 ITB. As Newsline went to production, contributions to next year's Bouvet Island de Expedition were put on hold for now. The 3Y0K Bouvet Island de Expedition, set for January 2025, has suspended its acceptance of donations temporarily while the team reassesses its financial picture. The de Expedition made the announcement on its website, 3Yankee0K.com. DXWorld.net posted a statement made on social media by Ken, LA7GIA, who explained, Unfortunately, the financial risk for the small team is too high, and we will spend the next few weeks in April assessing the situation and deciding what to do. We'll explore all possible options and we'll return with more information once we've reached a conclusion. According to the D-Expedition website, the team has secured 80% of its $400,000 budget, but was still needing $75,000. The 21-day D-Expedition is to have three operators and a four-person support team. This is Graham Kemp, VK4BB. The Courage Kenny Handyham program is celebrating 57 years of service with a QSO party. Congratulations to the Courage Kenny Handyham program, which is marking 57 years of providing service, training, and experience to disabled amateur radio operators. In celebration of the program's longevity and success, the Handyham Radio Club is holding a 48-hour QSO party, and all currently licensed program members are encouraged to get on the air. The action starts at 1900 UTC on Friday the 26th of April and continues through 1900 UTC on Sunday the 28th of April. Operators will be on all amateur bands using all modes including digital and VOIP to spotlight the Minnesota-based program and the club. Operators will be calling CQ Handyham 57. Logs are required and due no later than June 1st. Contacts can request an anniversary QSL card by QSLing directly to the program. See details at handyham.org. This is Dave Parks, WB8ODF. A reminder, the nominating period for the Bill Pasternak WA6ITF Memorial Young Ham of the Year Award is now open and runs through the end of May. More information and a nominating form can be found at arnewsline.org under the Awards tab. And that's all from the Amateur Radio Newsline, your independent source for amateur radio news since 1976 at arnewsline.org. With Ralph Squillacci, KK6ITB, Graham Kemp, VK4BB, Dave Parks, WB8ODF, Karen Eve Murray, KD2GUT at the news desk in New York and our news team across the globe. I'm Don Wilbanks, AE5DW73. We'll see you next time here on Ham Nation.